Welcome to week one. Um, we are working on introduction to C++. Uh, in this chapter, I'm going to break down every chapter into three or four different sections, so you don't have to spend like a whole hour working through this, which is way too much. So we'll work on it little at a time. Maybe I will do a 10-minute, 12-minute video, then you can go work on it. So to start off, we are going to work on the first two sections, uh, programming in general and programming basics. So let's say, what is programming in general? What are you going to learn from this class? Computer program basics, as it talks about here, is you put in an input. It's, it's a set of instructions. Each instruction gets executed one at a time, right? So input, it does something with the input, you get an output. So let's take a look at the picture. It's, you can read all that stuff. It's nicer to look at the picture and walk through some of these steps. And whenever you see this in a Zy book, you click on Start, and it says what it's going to do each step of the way. So here is number two, get input. So this is what people type at the keyboard. Two gets typed in. It gets read into X. So X now has the value two. And if I click on that arrow, it says, OK, go to the next step, where the user enters the next input, which is five. That goes into Y. Okay, so this is your keyboard. This is where you type in when it says enter something. And we'll see some of those things as we go through. It gets read into it right now on the screen. We have nothing other than us typing something. Um, then you click next. We go to the next line that does something with the two X and Y that we have put in. In this case, it adds it and sets the value to Z. Right? And then we click next. And then we tell it to output Z and wherever it is to the screen, it outputs it. So just because we calculate it doesn't mean it's getting output. So from this, what you understand is that we have to be explicit about every single step that we are trying to do. So I would kind of read through this. This is the same as what we talked about, and then try to answer these questions. For example, I'll do one of them. Let's do the first one. The program has a total number of how many instructions? So if you look at it, we have four lines. So let's try four. And it says, yes, the program has two input instructions, one calculation and one output instruction. Okay, So go through and do some of these activities. Um, and this just tells you a program is like a recipe. You have to have a step-by-step -step, uh, list of instructions to be able to do something with it. So you can have them in different orders because you can't have the bake to be the first one because that doesn't make any sense. You have to first take the stick of butter, mix it with a cup of sugar, then add the egg, and so on and so forth. So sequential following instructions in that order is very important. Why don't you try this? It's essentially following instructions, trying to do something with some numbers, um, try to figure out how that works. We'll see what computational thinking is. So computational thinking is essentially uh, creating a sequence of instructions to solve a problem. So you could do computational thinking in, in regular day-to-day -day life. It's being able to solve a problem using an algorithm. So the way you solve a problem is called an algorithm. So you can have algorithms to do different things. Um, you could have an algorithm to draw a picture of a dog. You know, you have tutorials. It shows you what to draw first. Maybe you draw a circle, and then maybe you draw the body using an ellipse or something like that, right? So I'm just giving you some examples. So you can have an algorithm to do anything. And the good thing here is it talks about algorithms to do different things. If you want algorithms to go to a certain place, you, you know, if you want directions to go to a certain place, you can write an algorithm out of it. So essentially, programming is nothing but a set of instructions that is um, thought about. You think about it first, which is how I'm going to solve the problem. Then you write down the step of instructions. Then you translate it into any language, C++ or Python. So once you have the algorithm, you can pretty much translate it into any language. That is the idea. Again, that is really what computer science is all about. So I will let you finish up some of these things. Just do these participation activities that will kind of help you understand um, what they're talking about in an algorithm. Let's go on to programming basics. Now we're going to talk about C++ syntax, things that we need to do to read the input. We talked about input, what we need to do some to do some calculations, and how to output things. Okay. So a C++ program starts with main. You can see main is a function, because you see the parentheses. Main is always where C++ goes to, right in the beginning. So when the program starts to run, it goes to main. 
So certain things that we should know about the program. Um, if I miss anything, you can always go back and read through some of these things. So this is called our code, right? Code is the source code that's written there. There are certain statements that we need at the beginning. So this is including the header file. Um, anything that starts with a hash sign is called a preprocessor directive. A preprocessor directive is essentially a different language. It's not quite C++. So this says include my header file, IO stream. It's a header file that we need. It has all the library functions to read and write, meaning to do read input and to be able to write to the screen. Um, then again, this is a C++ statement. We'll talk about that later, but you need that. Notice it ends with a semicolon. Then we have a function main. So this is something that you're going to see in all the programs, these statements, these three statements. Main is body of the function, and the body of the function is essentially shown by these curly brackets. We need this curly bracket. Okay. And uh, notice the empty parentheses. So lots of little things to notice. Um, and then we have some variables declared. We have, we'll talk more about variables, but this is just a skeleton of a program. We'll start with uh, certain things, assuming, you know, you know what some variables are, but we will talk about that in the next chapter. So wage is declared as an integer, and we put a value in it. That's what that says. And then this says output it to the user, and return says complete the program. Okay. And there are a few questions here. Again, every section has a few questions that you can go through and see, and this helps your understanding. So let's take a look at the first question. I'll try and do one or two questions, and then you can follow with the rest. Program execution begins at main and execute statements surrounded by which symbols? So program execution starts at main, and then these are the statements that they are talking about. These statements are surrounded by the curly bracket, right? So I would think that would be the right answer. You can go through and answer some of these questions. Here is that same program, uh, and you can click run to compile, and Zybooks is quite uh, interactive. It has all of these things that help you figure out, you know, you can run it, you can make mistakes. You can... The best way to learn is to tinker around with the code. What happens if I put an end line there, end L? So you run it, and then you see what you get. Uh, salary is goes on one line, then I get a new line, because that's what I told it to do. Cursor goes on the next line, and then I output the new wage, whatever that is. Okay. So play around with this code a little bit, see what you can get. We'll move on to input. How, now we're going to see how to read um, into a program if you want to read something. In this case, we have set wage to be a certain number. What if I wanted to read that from the user? So that is input. We want the user to be able to type something in. Um, so same program. But instead of setting a value for wage, we are reading it from the user. And notice here it's CN is the syntax to read something. And notice this extraction operator, as we call it, going the other way. So this extraction operator for C out goes less than, less than. This extraction operator goes greater than, greater than. That says read into something. And on the right side, you have the variable name, which is wage. So here is a program, again, that does basic input. Dog ears, human ears, these are the two variables that have been declared. We are reading into dog ears. And then we calculate, we take that multiplied by seven, that's human years. And then we output a whole bunch of statements. We say A, and then that is literal text that's gonna come out A. Dog years, whatever we type in, that's the number that's gonna come out. And then on the next, it's not gonna be on the next line, watch. It's gonna say all on the same line, because they remember, only if you have an end L, it's gonna to go to the next line. So if you run this, what do we get? It says A, and for example, if the user input was three, a three-year-old dog is about the same age as A. Three times seven is 21-year-old human. The only reason the 21 makes to the next line is because there's no room in this box, right? And then, of course, I get a new line here. So unless you actually go in here, for example, and you do this, now tinker around with this code, see what you can do. Make some changes to it. See when you get the new line, when you don't, and that is really the best way to learn. So notice here I put an end line after the A, and I get a new line after the A. A, and then it goes to the next line. So unless you actually do that, just because the C out statements are on separate lines doesn't mean that you're going to get them all on separate lines. 
And then here they talk about outputting the value of the variable, see out wage. So if you want to actually output the variable, then you just put in the variable, no double quotes around it. So for example, it says write code that outputs the following, end with a new line. So, so activities with output like below your outputs, white space, new lines or spaces must match exactly, it says. So if I put a semicolon there, let me try. Okay, now notice it says something's not right. It says your output, expected output. So it says this is what your output was. But the expected output says, look at that, at the end it says, I need a new line. It's expecting a new line. And it did tell me here somewhere, uh, write code that outputs the following end with a new line. So perhaps I should go here and say, I should say try again and go here and line and see if that helps. Ch check again, see what you get. And it says this time it's good. And I will stop here with this um, activity. We'll move on to the next section in our next video.